Hi, my name is Marco Cantu and I want to, to show you how to use Rust Studio Berlin Update 2 to build local Apex package using the Windows Centennial Bridge and deploy it to your local machine. Again, we're going to use Rust Studio Berlin Update 2. We're going, I'm going to show you how to hook the Windows SDK tools to the Rust Studio IDE, how to create a local certificate and install it in the trusted certificates, how to build, install, and uninstall a local Apex so you can rebuild and reinstall a new version. The, all of this will require Windows 10 anniversary update. So let me show you the entire and complete process for creating um, an Apex with Rust Studio 10 Berlin uh, update 2. So the first thing I'm going to do is to do some initial configuration. Um, and so I go, I'm going to go to the project tools options and go to the SDK manager and add um, SDK for 32-bit windows. And I'm going to add a new SDK to the system. This is the default location where um, a Windows kit is installed, but on my system, I have it on drive D. Now the system f automatically finds the four applications that um, the IDE will need to refer to. So these are in the standard location that they were found. And that's all I ha you have to do to add the, the SDK. The other thing, and I'm going to do that again in the, in the tools options, although you can customize it at the single application level, is to create a provisioning profile for Windows and I'm going to pick 32 bit Windows and Application Store and I'm going to create a new self-signed certificate for this and I need to pick a folder let's save it on the desktop for simplicity and I'm going to call this marco.pfx which is the extension for the certificate. The subject, I can customize it, but let's go for it. I'm going to type a password for the certificate and the idea will ask Windows to create the certificate on my behalf. Now we have a certificate and the IDE can see the certificate and read into the data. And so you can check that the file is correct and the password is also, is also appropriate. So with these steps done, let's create a new VCL application. It's going to be a very simple application. I'm going to add a button to it. And in the button, which is called button one, let's skip for it. I'm going to use the hello caption. I'm using the new quick edits for that. And in the event handler, I'm just going to do show message. Hello Centennial. That I've of course mistyped. Okay, so let's run and compile our application. It works fine, great. No surprise here. Uh, but then we're going to move to picking a different configuration, which is application store. Uh, deployment. So now let me revise the features of this application for the store. Some of it is the appearance section, uh, sorry, the application section and the version info are part of the application. What I'm going to do actually is pick um, Windows 10 look and feel for the app. I'm going to do the Windows 10 green, uh, pick that as a default style. Uh, let me actually check that the application works fine with the new style. It looks great. So let's go for it. The other thing I need to do is to check my deployment information for the store application. We have the two PNG files. We have the executable itself. And we have an application manifest that you could potentially customize for the application. Let me save the application. 
after building it because the Apex manifest um, needs to be recreated. And now we can actually open the Explorer folder. And here we can see that there was a manifest template. So the skeleton of the uh, manifest file. Let's actually open it in the IDE. So this is the skeleton of the manifest file for um, Windows Desktop Bridge app or Centennial app. And some of the values are actually replaced in the IDE with information that comes from the version info or some of the other configuration settings. So you generally don't have to touch it, but if needed, you can customize the manifest template or the final manifest that's embedded into the application. Of course, as the result of deploying, deploying this application, if we go back here, we get a Win32 folder, the bug, and also this is the final manifest that uh, was used. Notice in the project up in the under the project, we find the uh, Apex file. This is the package of the application that has been generated with by the IDE. Now this application has, is signed with a local code signing certificate. So if you try to install it, you get an error message that the certificate is not trusted. So there are two ways around it. One is to buy a full code signing certificate. Um, that's going to cost a little money. The second option you have is actually to take the certificate that you created or the same operation that can actually be done starting with the certificate embedded in the Apex file. It's a very similar operation. Install it on the local machine. Pick the certificate. Uh, in this case, provide the password. If you're starting with the Apex, you don't need to provide the password. And then you need to place the certificate in a store, which is the trusted people store. If you do this operation, then the certificate will be known to the system. And now you can reopen the Apex file, do the install operation, and the install will uh, succeed. Uh, this means that the application can be executed, uh, well, yeah, from, from this Apex installation window, but it will show up in the start menu, installed in the start menu as project nine. These are new app. In all practical terms, and of course we can execute it from here, in all practical terms, the application is stored in a special location of the operating system that's under program files. There is a Windows apps subfolder that's generally protected where you get all of the WinRT applications, including our project nine for this specific ID and version number. So when you're creating a new version number, you can redeploy the application. If you just rebuild it and redeploy it, without changing the version number, then as you try, try to open it and um, install it once more, you'll get an error that there is exist already an existing application with the same signature and the same version number that is available. So one option you have is to go uninstalling the application. We can open the apps and features section that has the WinRT apps and we should be able to find our project nine and uninstall it and remove it completely from the system. And now if we got back go back to the Windows app folder, we can see that project nine is not there anymore. And at this point, we can install a new version. In general, and for store apps, every new version will have a new version ID. And so applications with different version ID can 
stored side by side in the um, Windows apps folder. So we have seen how to use Rust to your Berlin Update 2 to build a Centennial package deployed to your local machine following all of the steps that are required for this process. And Rust Studio is the first IDE that lets you do all of the steps without using external manual tools. Thanks for watching this video and you can reach me at marco.cantormarketer.com, follow my blog or my Marco Canto Twitter account. Thanks.